Uh, I didn't even look at the chair slides. <laughs> 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 Okay, I think we're about ready to get started. Um, I see we have a bunch of uh, remote people and they seem to be able to hear. Okay, um, as a reminder to those who are remote, uh, you can get, we do have a, in the Meet Echo interface, there's a way to jump into the virtual queue and you can speak your questions as opposed to um, typing them in Jabber. And with that, uh, I know so we can go ahead and so first of all, welcome to the NTP Working Group. Um, this is the IETF Notewell. Uh, you will have seen it before. There are a number of policies to which we ask you to adhere. And this is also our IPR regime. So everybody, if you have any questions, feel free to ask um, if you're not familiar with it. Um, you, did, you did actually acknowledge it when you registered as well. So um, anyway, that's the note well. Uh, this is our agenda for the day. We have a second page. Yeah, we have a second page to the agenda. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is agenda back. Well, first of all, we're going to do a uh, minute taker. I know we have, uh, Tal has agreed to take minutes. Do we have a Jabber scribe? I thought that might be the case. <laughs> I saw you sign in. <laughs> so Rich has agreed to be the Jabber scribe. Uh, and at this point, we're going to do agenda bashing. 
we had a bunch of NTP related topics first. Uh, and then after that, we had uh, uh, sort of some TikTok stuff, even though this was the NTP working group, because to sort of remind everybody, our intention is to finish the enterprise profile and to um, uh, close TikTok and create a single time working group so that we have all of the time resources in one place, because that's effectively what we've had for the last several years anyway. Um, I have had a request to sort of swap the TikTok stuff with the um, NTP stuff so that for somebody who will be arriving a bit later. So, um, so we will start with tic the TikTok stuff. Um, as far as the TikTok working group status goes, we do have one document, the enterprise profile, um, and it is ready to go to the IESG. We, we currently, between the two working groups, have four documents queued up and ready to go. And, and I have uh, discussed this with Suresh, and they will be coming out post with. Um, so the next two items, um, you can do them in either order you would like, Doug, but uh, it would be for you. Um, is, is, are there any other agenda bashes, by the way? No. OK, great. So I thought I'd start with uh, just an update on I, you want me to do it? No, you can come up here and do it. Yeah. So I'm Doug Arnold. I'm vice chair of IEEE 1588. Uh, I thought I would just give you a quick update where that's at. Uh, we've we have a draft revision. It's gone through sponsor ballot um, and recirculation, and we have some comments on the recirculation which uh, may or may not force us to do another recirculation. We're meeting this week to decide that. If not, we will go right to publishing. Um, then we would probably get out by the end of the calendar year. If we have to do another recirculation, maybe it'll get out by the calendar year. We would do a, whatever the minimum one is. So that's, that's where we're at. After that, we expect to be updating it with things that we had pushed off uh, working more in the mode of IEEE 802.1, if you're familiar with that group at all, where we will be doing amendments and core agenda on a much small, shorter time scale, and then do a roll-up revision every once in a while. Um, so we'll be making changes right away on that. Any questions? Awesome. Yes. Okay, so uh, I wanted to present us a number, some slides uh, created uh, by Steve Grindert at IBM and myself, um, mostly Steve. Uh, we're, we're looking to create um, a secure profile for 1588. I'm not sure where we're going to do it yet, but we're just presenting it here to get some feedback, if possible. Um, it will be a profile targeted at uh, sort of enterprise, um, you know, single organization networks, mostly in the financial industry. Um, but uh, they're adamant that they want something that has built-in security. Um, Oh, So this is being driven uh, to a large extent by um, regulations. Uh, in the U.S., uh, we have FINRA, and there's required that that clocks be maintained to 50 milliseconds, which really isn't that difficult. Um, but you have to also log it and you know provide a record showing that you are, have stayed in compliance and have audits um, showing that you have some reasonable scheme for keeping good time and that sort of thing. Um, a similar uh, requirement came out of Europe which 
has a tighter time synchronization requirement of 100 microseconds. And a lot of firms, even if they're in the US, do trades in Europe as well. Or if they're in Asia, they do trades in Europe. And so they're going to want to obey that um, as well. Then there's also uh, the players in finance um, who are doing faster things. And they, they have their own much, much tighter timing requirements just for their own measurement system, things like high frequency trading um, going on as well. So the data center in this case um, would be the uh, data center for a bank or other financial type firm. Um, and so they have multiple sites. Um, that's one of the things we have to account for, even though it's enterprise uh, network, it's, it can be quite a big distributed, even globally distributed network until there's some, we have to take that into account with whatever we come up with. So uh, in timing, it seems like uh, security is always an afterthought. We had NTP, just NTP, and then we had auto key to try to add security, and now we're, we're improving that. Then we had PTP, and all we had was some experimental annex in version two that no one ever implemented, so we don't really have security for that. So it's kind of an afterthought in the timing standards community, but not in for these customers. They're, they're adamant, it's like, what are you guys doing? Uh, I get calls from them saying this is not acceptable. So they really say it has to be secure. So it's it's a strict requirement. Um, now there was there is some work that's was done and it's gonna come out in this revision that I mentioned before in 1588. Uh, there's a, a discussion of approaches to security um, that's in an informative annex and then there's there's also a, a TLV that can be attached to any PTP message that was defined, which we tried to make versatile enough to use various key exchange mechanisms that are anticipated might be used. Um, so these things uh, are coming out, but they're not out yet. Um, and what is published is this NXK that nobody uses, so um, it's pretty much useless at this point. Okay, so as I said, it's um, a required practice in, in this industry and you know, in really in all industries in an increasing extent. Um, and so that, that's really the impetus for this, uh, impetus for this um, effort that we're starting is to address this, uh, you know, many, many uh, presentations and papers have been given on, you know, the problems associated with insecure time. Um, now, there's some other things that have come about talking to uh, people in this industry that they're, they would like to see. Uh, one is we have to take into account that uh, many of the PTP uh, slaves will actually be just software running on standard hardware. What what it has available in terms of hardware support um, will probably vary, and so it has to be able to work in the worst case where it's just some server with no hardware time, time stamping capability and, you know, do the best you can. Um, uh, another interesting thing they brought up uh, when I talked to some of these folks is we're already implementing s several key exchange mechanisms. Can you please not make us do another one uh, that's just for timing and not used anywhere else? So they would really like something standard that they already have implemented. That would make them happy. 
and I'm sure there will be some more things that come out as we get into this. They'll say, oh, it really, we really want this and not that. Um, so we're going forward with an effort to, to draft something. I don't really have um, a profile to present to you yet. Um, not sure even where it's going to be. Um, it might be here. Um, but some of the things uh, that were suggested that we might think about because they might be helpful with security would be um, if you had a network that could use peer delay, um, that's easier to secure because a lot of the timing information is just exchange on links from one device to another. Um, in a network that can support peer delay, which means every switch basically participates. Um, uh, we might we might look at Tesla, which is you know has been described in this group with respect to um, NTP. Has been discussed with respect to NTP, um, so you're familiar with it, I hope. Um, in PTP, um, we have the possibility to do to have a profile that requires two-step timing, and that could make security much easier to implement. So that's something to consider. Um, we could say transparent clocks are a real complication that we don't want to take on at this point um, because the people who design them kind of expect to be sort of altering messages as they go through and um, sometimes even in a cut through mode and that can be really tricky if you're trying to do hash codes and that sort of thing. So, so may, maybe we won't take that on in the first place. Okay, so I'm um, just, just sort of announcing we're we're getting started with this. If anyone's interested, you know, please contact. Uh, it's really not quite registering. There we go. Um, please contact me or or Steen Gundar from IBM. Uh, we're sort of driving this, uh, and we're we're looking for input on what requirements are or. If you're interested in getting started, we can go ahead and try to craft something uh, or at least get some ideas together on what what PTP options we'd allow and not allow and that sort of thing. Any questions? Hi, Tom Mizrahi. Uh, first of all, very interesting. Um, definitely something that will be interesting uh, in this working group. Um, just a general question, are you mainly targeting the financial market in terms of the accuracy and in terms of the applications that use time? Or are you also considering other applications? We would consider other applications if they have, if they're similar enough, but the people who are coming to us and saying we want this are from finance. So those are the, we're gonna tailor it for their needs. If it works for someone else, that's great. Or if someone comes along and say, we also need it, and we're similar enough that the same profile could work, then we would include them. But so far, we haven't heard from those folks. We're hearing from finance that they want this. OK, thanks. Stu Card, um, anything to say about uh, the White Rabbit variant? So uh, White Rabbit. Um, is very much of interest to the high frequency traders. There, a lot of them are playing with it already. Um, but for most of the customers who are coming to us for this, it's more for the uh, regulatory compliance, um, where they're talking 100 microseconds or something, and White Rabbit is just a complication they don't need to take on at this time. Any other questions? Yeah, just a sec. Go ahead, Watson. Hello, uh, this is Watson live from Cloudflare. Uh, you mentioned key exchange where you only want to implement one. Why not NTSAE to agree on keys? That's an excellent question. Um, and we, 
we we definitely would consider that. You know, we haven't got to the point where we're saying this is the one. Um, and I think I think it's a very safe bet that uh, the people who will be imp putting this into their network will also be running NTP and they'll be wanting to run secure NTP. So I think it would probably be very helpful to them that if those two lined up in terms of key exchange mechanisms. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Let's do it again. I'll go to the opposite end of the world. Anything to say about um, PTP over extremely high variance links, you know, wireless links? Uh, not, not really. I haven't, um, I haven't gotten a lot of feedback from network operators about wireless uh, and PTP. I know uh, people do it in sort of dedicated uh, wireless links. Um, where both ends are sort of proprietary by the same company. Um, there, there, is, there is some work in the 80, IEEE 802.1 to support Wi-Fi uh, and using their built-in timing mechanism, which uh, is likely to have better hardware support than just PTP messages. So um, they've developed an interface for that with the expectation that it'll be used, but I don't, I don't know how it fits in with this work, um, I think uh, the people are looking to secure servers, um, which probably won't be on wireless, at least not in the near future. Um, although eventually they might. Um, and wireless devices, you know, maybe handheld devices or laptops or something might just need NTP. Um, and so they would get NTP over Wi-Fi, would be my guess. Go ahead, Daniel. Yeah. Um, so I continue to maintain that trying to cryptographically secure a protocol that only has has one-way message transmission, um, so this would apply to both PTP and to broadcast mode NTP, um, is basically a doomed enterprise because they're never going to solve the problem of delay attacks. Whereas you have a, have a query response, then you include a unique identifier in the query and that establishes a time bound on the freshness of the response. Um, but if you're trying to establish precision within 100 microseconds, um, that um, while while that's more than you that's that's more precision than you can expect to get with NTP over the internet. That's easily achievable with NTP where your where your time source is in the same data center. Um, and if if that's that's that, and it's given that that's the only environment where PTP is practical to begin with, um, why not just use NTP for this purpose? So that's a good question. Why not just use NTP? Because if you if you pay close attention, you can get 100 microseconds with NTP with, with standard equipment and implementations. Um, maybe, uh, I, I think some people who are asking for PTP are anticipating uh, the future. They say, okay, it's 100 microseconds now, but, but the HFT people are already turning around information and posting trades in 10 microseconds. And so if the regulators are really gonna be looking for proper behavior, they're gonna to have to bring those times down. They originally I, asked for, they originally asked for a nanosecond. I, I mean, I, I, th I, think if you're, I think if you're trying to get to those levels, um, then you simple, you, uh, 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 you simply need to be able to, to have a, have, have, a tr have a trusted path between the uh, be, uh, be, uh, between the sort between the source and the client. I think if you're on, I think if you're on any kind of adversarial network at all, and you're trying to get those positions, you're just doomed. Yeah, I mean there there are people, even high frequency traders, who use hardware timestamp NTP, and they get uh, quite excellent um, time transfer accuracies. Um, nevertheless, there's a number of network operators who have come to us, come to IBM, 
saying we would like a secure PTP, so uh, we're going to give them that as well. Um, I, I, I mean, if 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 you, I mean, I if I mean if 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 if, 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 if if you have a customer demanding it just to make them just to make them feel better with um, with with no particular uh, demands on what they're actually trying to accomplish, then uh, then then I I'm, then okay. I I I, uh, I understand that. I see that all the time. I don't think that's a um, that's something for the ITF to consider. Um, I think if you're actually trying to solve problems, uh, then uh, then the answer is 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 build a network where you can trust your wires. Um, and don't do the crypto because it's not buying you anything. Well, I think uh, if I look at why um, why PTP is popular in a lot of industries, it's probably because the availability of things like boundary clocks and transparent clocks. Um, and pro probably a greater availability of, say, end devices with hardware time stamping. So that's that might be what's driving the uh, desire to have a PTP version that's secure as well as NTP. Yeah, I'm not sure we're gonna resolve this today. Um, uh, Christoph. Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me? I can. Nice. Uh, sorry, I don't have video available. Um, just yeah, to to really reinforce uh, Daniel's point. Yeah, there's lots of theoretical work, and we've also seen it that that says basically one way uh, or purely one way communication has this drawback that Daniel pointed out. You're always going to be vulnerable to delay attacks, um, no matter what crypto you throw on the thing, um, and maybe it would be healthy to not just think about as like the alternatives being do PTP with mostly or just one way or just use NTP because PTP does support two-way communication. Um, it's in its standard mode, that's just not the main source of, of data that you use for the actual disciplining of clocks. Um, but you have a wired network and it's, it's definitely possible to talk both ways and then you can get the, the guarantees. Um, and also, I know that at least Martin and Martin Langer and myself um, are working on, on um, prospects of, of basically combining uh, two-way and one-way approaches to to have like two-way protocols with security cover this 100% guarantee of what offset you have at worst, um, and then being able to to run like other protocols. Um, in parallel, where you don't just go from from one to the next, but you actually look at the the uh, measurement results of both, and then you have this um, probabilistic, basically, uh, uh, feel for what your offset is probably, and then for in what interval your your offset is guaranteed to be, um, and maybe that's going to be helpful in this this regard. But also, could just something be done with a PTP profile where mainly uh, the, the two-way messages are used for, for actual synchronization? Well, PTP is usually used in a two-way mode, like NTP. Um, but, you know, you raise one interesting point, which is if you have a network where there's a, some kind of two-way protocol that's been carefully calibrated over some critical link, then that might be something that could just be used and um, other protocols can can initiate at the ends of that link, um, taking, taking advantage of that uh, well-characterized delays. Okay. I, I think, um just to sort of wrap this up, I, I think the point is this, uh, the revision of 1588 that actually includes a security mechanism um, will be coming out towards the end of this year. 
Um, and uh, that's just sort of the beginning of the security work. Um, we will be, uh, there's an enterprise profile that's ready to go to the IESG, uh, and this would, would be, would potentially be something like that for security. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, this work is just starting, so there's a lot of opportunities. Um, and I think that there's a lot of synergy between the 1588 community uh, and the NTP community, and we're solving some of the same problems. And so the more that we can leverage each other, the better off we will be. Uh, so thank you. Um, for And if anybody has any further questions or wants to participate, please talk to Doug. I'm kicking you out of the queue, Christoph. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Uh, so with that, we're going to go back to the um, top of the agenda. And the uh, first thing is I'm just going to do a really quick walk. We have um, um, the just a quick uh, couple of highlights of, of work that has uh, been done. Uh, I think at the last meeting, we actually announced that the uh, MAC uh, RFC had been published, so uh, congratulations to Anshal. Um, and this time we can announce with great fanfare that the BCP has been published, uh, like last week. <laughs> uh, so to, uh, to Daniel and to um, Dieter and to uh, Harlan, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we're very pleased to finally have that off our plate. Um, we have uh, three documents that are actually ready uh, at this point to go to the IESG, uh, NTS, uh, the guidelines for defining packet timestamps and interleave modes. And now that we've cleaned out some of our of um, our chaff, we can move forward with those. Um, and uh, did I mention interleave modes? I did, yes. NTS, the guidelines for defining timestamps and the NTP interleave modes are all ready to go uh, to the IESG. Um, with that, uh, we didn't do a face-to-face -face hackathon, but we did actually have a virtual hackathon this weekend uh, with um, the uh, with some folks remote. Were they going to speak to it, or was did, was Krista going to talk? Or yeah. okay, uh, is Krista online? Oh, he is online. There he is. So, Krista, are you ready? I don't know if he's actually. Just are you ready to talk about the NTP hackathon? Or are you? Can you get in the queue? Okay, well, we will come back to him. I'm not sure what the issue is, uh, but they did, uh, Watson and Chister and Martin all worked over the weekend. Um, actually, Martin and, um, and so if any of you all wanna get in the queue and give a quick update on what you did, that'd be great. Um, otherwise, we will talk about it on the mailing list. Um, Yang. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Dhruv. Uh, I'll give you a short update on the Yang model. So next slide. We'll use this, I guess. Yes. Oh, moved up a little. So we made an update uh, between the two ITFs, uh, mostly editorial. Uh, we were given comments re uh, regarding the Yang style guides that we should use more references, describe the reference in detail. So we made that. Uh, change. We got a comment regarding the security consideration and explicitly hi highlighting that how the security of keys are taken care of via the Yang model. So we have updated that. Uh, we are also using the NACM technique, which is the NetConf access control list. So via which we set the NACM default deny so that uh, the, the part which we don't want people to have access to, such as keys modifications, that is hidden by default. So those are the main changes that we have done and done a little bit uh, formatting uh, based on what is the RFC style guide with respect to 
tabs and and all the other things that you need to take care of before your documents can be sent to uh, ISG. So uh, we got some comments from Watson. So thanks for that. Uh, one of the things we wanted to explicitly discuss in this face to face is currently the NTS is not part of this Yang model. Now, among the authors, we thought that it's better to get what we have right now out of the working group and anything else and new work anyway will continue and we will use the augment mechanism of the base model to add new features and it could it's perfectly fine for them to be in uh, a, a future document but we can get what we have uh, right now which is in a pretty stable uh, space and publish it so that's the feeling of the authors but we want to know what the working group agrees with this or or not, or whether NTS, we should wait and add NTS into this model itself. So that was one of the key things which I wanted a feedback from the uh, group. And if the group doesn't care, the authors have a feeling that we want to publish what we have right now. Maybe cares. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Suresh uh, Krishnan. So personally, I think it should be there. Like, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't think it's like a serial process, right? So you don't have to wait for NTS to be done to start incorporating things in there. So. Just do the stuff in parallel, right? uh, and I can hold the document somewhere uh, up the line for the references, right? So I don't think it should be an issue. Like we can still go through the whole process, like add the things, and then when the working group is done, kick it out, and then if something changes, we can take care of it after, right? So that's how I think about it. Uh, uh, the only thing the, the, is maybe from the author's point of view. I think the authors are a little bit like, ah, we have done the work, let yeah. us go. Otherwise, you will keep adding us, <laughs> keep making us wait yeah. for new, new features. So that's the feeling. But like, I, we want to do what, what's right I, at the same time. Yeah, I, I think the other thing is, is that it really is sort of a separate piece, right? I mean, the implementations have, have sort of separated the NTS server from the NTP server. So they're sort of two. Implementation-wise, they're two separate pieces. That's also a good right. Point. Like, so the counterpoint is like in software, right? We did a Yang model for multiple mechanisms, which probably don't ever coexist, right? So I'm, I'm just saying, like, if there's enough commonality between them, like, we should do the right. Like as I said, like, do the right thing, right? But if there's nothing in common, like, go ahead, right? But I'm sure there's like a bunch of stuff in common that we're either gonna like redo or like you know probably miss it, right? Like something like that. Right? Like, I'm not sure like how we want to do this. Like if you want to skip it to later, like how would you do it? Would you use schema mount? Is that what you're thinking of? The, basically, uh, whatever is the common grouping, whatever things that we can use, we will use. And if it needs to be implemented separately, it's better belongs in a separate draft. So I want to know more opinion, more feedback. What's the right thing uh, from the group as well? We have maybe yeah. more. Harlan, uh, if you have a point on this, go for it. I... I'll just stick around. Go ahead, Harlan. Uh, oh, good. OK. I trust you can hear me. Yeah. Yes, we can hear you. Cool. So the two questions I have are, um, has a reference implementation of the Yang model been done yet? And is it possible to use any of the existing NTP authentication schemes with Yang, as in the existing private key model? Uh, I think the, uh, the private key part is there. Auto key doesn't exist, and NTS is also not there. So only the basic, uh, uh, the key configuration thing is there in the model. And okay. uh, with respect to implementations, uh, we had done a very simple, uh, nothing that we can ship right now, but just to make things working, uh, some test internally. But we cannot say that we have a vendor implementation either for this model yet. Thank you. Um. So um, my view is like, you know, if, if the authors like are like, you know, want a break or something, just go for it. Like, just get it done, send it off. Hmm. And I, I, I just don't want to do a bit of this, right? Like, so if you're going no, to do it's definitely things, never going to be the best. Right. Like, so if you're going to do a schema mount, like hmm. for the stuff, I think I'm going to be okay with that. Yeah. yeah. It's always going to be augmentation or a schema mount or something. Never. It's not going to be a bit. Harlan, you're still in the queue. Did I, did you get back in or did I forget to push the button? You forgot to push the button. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. OK. Um, yeah, it's not there yet. So. What, go back to the, uh, let's do whatever is after the Yang, and I'll get this uploaded. All right, uh, port randomization. 
Uh, Fernando, you registered at, oh, okay. So you're in the queue. Did you register as a remote presenter or as a, oh, let me get to that. Apparently, yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'll be presenting the draft on um, poor randomization in NTP version four. Next slide, please. So as an introduction to this uh, document, I will switch off video because maybe it's better for, um, for the network. Um, as an introduction to this document, it's essentially a document that updates uh, the base uh, NTP specification uh, so that um, NTP clients employ poor randomization. Uh, Fernando, we're, we're having yes. a bit of an issue. Um, Is it better now? Yes, it's better now, go ahead. Okay, um, so essentially this document updates the base NTP spec so that it employs uh, poor randomization for NTP clients. Um, this document essentially puts the NTP spec in line with BCP 156, which is a BCP produced by the um, transport area on transport protocol uh, poor randomization. The base uh, NTP specification essentially suggests that NTP clients employ the NTP service uh, port 123 for the local port. And this has a number of implications. Uh, for example, it makes uh, blind attacks against NTP easier. It hinders uh, distributed denial of service mitigation because it's not easily to tell NTP server versus NTP client packets. And of course, this is a, a requirement that cannot be complied with uh, when you have multiple NTP clients behind uh, a NAT because ob obviously you cannot reuse the same port number for the multiple clients. Um, most NTP uh, implementations already do this because essentially uh, they rely on the underlying operating system for picking the client side port. And since nowadays, uh, most operating systems employ uh, transport protocol for randomization, then this means that all of these uh, NTP uh, implementations benefit from that. Next slide. So this is essentially what this document does. It recommends poor randomization on a per association basis. I spell out um, this thing clearly because at some point we were discussing whether to do randomization on a per association or a per um, request basis but this is the most, um, let's say, conservative take. It's not that we have closed the door to randomizing on a, a, a per request basis, but this is the, you know, the most conservative take. And the document formally updates um, the NTP spec, obviously, so that, you know, this is uh, the default uh, choice for NTP clients. Next slide. So, um, from an author's point of view, we wonder if uh, the NTP working group wants to take this document as a working group item. So it's uh, our question to the chairs and the working group. Okay, there's been a, um, Fernando, can I ask you to do one more thing? There's, I know there's been a fair amount of, uh, of uh, traffic on the mailing list about this. Can you just summarize what, what, what you believe the traffic on the mailing list has been? Yeah, there have been essentially two things. Uh, so some of the comments essentially were that if you uh, do poor randomization on a per transaction basis, uh, then that might have issues on the um, calculation of, of the of, on time synchronization because packets might go through different paths. Um, that's why uh, this version of the document uh, essentially uh, 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 has taken the most conservative approach, which is randomizing on a per association basis. So that's one of the things. Uh, the other comments that we have received, I think they were from Danny, was that, well, this doesn't completely eliminate um, like blind attacks or that there are other mitigations for this. And our response to that is that uh, poor randomization is a mitigation against blind attacks are at the transport layer. So you can do anything else uh, on any other layers. In fact, you should. Uh, these countermeasures are essentially orthogonal. Um, that means there are things that you can do um, at the application layer, like NTP does, or there are documents proposing that. 
but this is orthogonal to that. Uh, you know, whenever you want to perform blind attacks against um, a protocol, well, there are a certain number of values that you need to guess or know. Uh, at least IP addresses are in a transport protocol port numbers, and obviously randomizing the you know uh, port number on the client side, of course, uh, increases the difficulty to to perform such attacks. Okay. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll need to take this to the mailing list eventually. Are there any comments today about uh, adoption of this draft? Okay, we will, uh, let me do it another way. Is there anybody opposed to the adoption of this draft? Anybody in favor? Anybody will read it if we actually adopt it? What? Too many questions. <laughs> too, too many questions. I'm being corrected by our AD. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna assume Harlan wanted it to mic. He's fine discussing this in the group. Okay. Um, go ahead, Watson. I'll read it and, and provide comments. Uh, I support adoption. And I think we really do need this mechanism uh, for DDoS prevention among other things. Okay, excellent. So uh, we will take the uh, call for adoption to the list. Um, so I'm gonna go backwards in, in time briefly to the hackathon. Um, since Chister can't get to the mic, I'm just gonna point this out. I've uploaded it as, um, uh, I've uploaded it to the materials page, so it's not really a slide, and I clearly don't expect you all to read this at this point. Uh, but basically, uh, the group of them uh, worked for two days over the weekend, and I can't see that myself, so I have to look at my version here. Um, and this is basically the test results of how far they got and what they tested. Um, and I, I, uh, first of all, I, I uh, would like to thank everybody who worked remotely. I know especially the guys in Europe, you guys were, were working fairly late on this. Um, and so if everybody would take a quick look at that and see where we are, and if um, this seemed to be fairly useful, I think it would be useful to have a conversation on the mailing list about uh, whether to do another one of these again. I, I know the next IETF meeting is actually uh, in Singapore, which time zone wise is, is pretty challenging, uh, but maybe we can pick another time or another date if this is useful to do. Um, the other thing that we talked about I mean, we, we had previously discussed setting up a mailing list. I set one up, but we never actually used it. Um, specifically for implementation discussions, I think at this point, implementation discussions are, you know, the NTP mailing list is generally not so overcrowded that we can't have those discussions on the NTP mailing list as well. Um, but we also used a Slack channel. I don't know if a Slack channel is useful going forward for folks to, you know, discuss implementation, testing questions, whatever. Um, so we'll, we'll ask that question on the mailing list as well, but um, uh, thank you to, the, uh, to our completely virtual hackathon team. Um, any other questions or comments on the hackathon stuff? I will say it's really made a difference on, on helping us make, uh, get critical mass and move NTS forward, so I think it, it's really, it is very key. All right, um, next was... Uh, on implementing time. So next is Anshal. Um, I don't have any slides on it because there is uh, no major change from the discussion that we had in Thailand. Um, there was no comments to be addressed. There was just a minor um, negligible change um, in the POSIX section, that, that's mostly the editorial change that there was. Um, I don't think there was anyone who was against the adoption of the document. Um, so I guess that's the question. Um, did anybody have any questions or comments on the adoption of the document? Were there? Okay, um, 
So we're basically getting like four or five documents out the door and then four or five documents in the door. <laughs> Is that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> uh, I think it's a good thing. I mean, we, we do, it, it shows some sort of progress. <laughs> um, all right, so there's no questions or comments. Um, so thank you to Anchal and Wilhelm for the, the update of this document and we will look at adopting it. Um, next was rough time. That's, is that yes. Um, so I don't have slides for either of that too. Um, but after uh, the last um, discussion at the IATF uh, in the in Prague, we have updated the rough time draft twice and with two major changes. One is in the timestamp section. Uh, we have added the modified Julian date format for the timestamps. And the second change was about the delay attacks, uh, that how does rough time handle delay attacks. And I've updated that based on the text contributed by Tal. Thank you, Tal, for uh, the contribution. Um, there were other um, structural and language changes. Uh, uh, that was contributed by Marcus uh, DNS, uh, Marcus, by Marcus, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, sorry. Um, uh, based on his implementation experience, he wanted uh, some clarification for the text and language. Uh, so I made that in the um, last um, update of the draft. Um, and there were, as far as I believe, no outstanding issues. Um, if anyone has some comments or suggestions, um, they can say now. Questions or comments on the rough time draft? Has anybody in here read this draft? Oh, excellent. How about how many read the implementing time draft? No, yeah, a little bit better. Excellent. Um, no remote questions on implementing time, on uh, rough, time? rough time? Okay. Oh, wait, Watson? Hello, so, uh, as one of the co-authors of the Rough Time Draft, um, we are currently working on, or I am currently working on reconciling the PLL with the Rough Time Estimates. Um, if people have an actual use case where this is necessary, please let me know, because otherwise it is quite a bit of work. And for the applications like tech checking validity of certificates, you don't need this. Um, so please let me, you know, if, if, if people have ideas of implementation and application areas, that would be useful in guiding the future evolution. Thank you. Okay. Uh, with that, um, I guess we have nothing. No, no questions for Anshel, so thank you. We will work on adopting that. All right, thanks. Um, the next one is um, a draft. Uh, well, Net Netta can talk to it. I think we've only seen Netta remotely before. So this is <laughs> oh, no, I, I was here a year ago. Oh, that's right. You uh, were yeah. here a year ago. I forgot about that. And we've seen you remotely since then. Yeah, ever since. Uh, so hi, I'm Neda, um, and I want today to uh, present very briefly a uh, uh, mechanism for NTP and uh, the updates that were made based on the comments that we got for um, a, a working group uh, adoption. Um, Next slide. Uh, it, it, it's sorry. It's a joint work with uh, Danny Dolev, Tal Mizrahi, and uh, Michal Shapir. So. Uh, a short reminder is uh, we consider this this, this uh, threat model, but we assume that the attacker have full control of a large function of the NTP server, say quarter. Uh, we assume that he is capable of both deciding the content of the NTP and uh, the timing when the response is going to run to the clients. And of course, we assume that he is malicious and try to shift the client's time as much as possible. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, and a short reminder of the solution. Uh, of uh, Hormos uh, architecture. So on the one hand, we rely on many NTP servers. We generate large pool of NTP, a hundred of servers per client. But on the other side, we um, uh, choose at random only tens of them in order to avoid overloading the NTP servers. And finally, we use uh, smart filtering in order to remove outliers and um, make it hard to the attacker to contaminate the chosen sample. <coughs> Sorry. 
Um, next slide, please. Um, so, so far we got uh, comments of, on uh, two topics. The first one was that we should uh, um, decide where we uh, how we want to use Honus uh, uh, to enhance uh, uh, NTP security, uh, whether it, it will be externally uh, to the NTP or within. The, uh, the, or the, uh, within the NTP. So in draft 01, we added a hybrid approach when we say that uh, when precision and currency are critical, then basically uh, by default use NTP v4 updates and uh, when a, a threat or evidence of attack is, is detected based on Honus samples, then you can use uh, Honus time um, instead. And the other topic was um, that since Honus used greater variety of uh, uh, sample size server over, over time, so maybe it can cause uh, adverse effect on precision and, and currency. So in draft 02, we evaluate uh, the, these effects uh, both on uh, precision and in uh, currency in um, different uh, locations, both in Europe and in the US. And we found that Honus has fair precision around three milliseconds, and uh, Honus updates are close to, uh, to the average NTP updates um, up to two to three millisecond gap. Um, next slide, please. Um, so, so far we have updates and the draft based on all the comments that we got. Uh, and of course we continue to uh, evaluate Honus uh, performance and security in, at, for different attacks at different locations in the world. And we believe that Honus draft is ready for working group uh, adoption. Um, thank you. Uh, from Harlan, is this appropriate for authenticated or unauthenticated time? Uh, good question. So, so we, we assume that um, for now it's unauthenticated because we don't have uh, authentication yet, but we assume that uh, uh, the concept of Honus and query many servers uh, can be still exist and uh, uh, we can still benefit it uh, even when we are uh, talking about uh, uh, authentication servers. Okay, any other questions? From Harlan, how is this threat model effective against authenticated servers? Packets. Yeah, so um, uh, we consider a, a man in the we, we talked about man in the middle, but uh, basically we assumed that it's a, a much a sophi more sophisticated uh, attacker that uh, have control over the uh, servers, which means that we won't recognize it the uh, uh, this attack by authentication. Um, is that answer your question? Yeah. Um, okay. Seems to. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. That's a wow. I won there. Yes. Wow, I can't parse that. So his response is that's a pretty big assumption. What? That you're assuming that the attacker has control of the server. That's the point. We want to be um, we want to be able to co-op with the uh, the most sophisticated attacker there is. So um, I think it's um, I think it's essential and and of course. Uh, um, it can also uh, uh, tackle uh, delay attacks and other things that, that authentication servers won't uh, be able to to detect. Or... Anything else from? Oh, there's one more from Harlan, Rich. Ah. Yeah, but I think it was a question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe, so, Carl, it's a pretty big assumption over lots of servers. Oh, I see. But I think it was, yeah, yes, but okay. what you're looking at, I think. Yeah, because we're trying to, to, to be the, the um, to create a safer environment that we can. 
Uh, so of course we uh, uh, you you can say yeah what the probability that would, uh, the attacker would have uh, 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 would have this kind of control over a large function of the the identity pool, but it doesn't mean that we don't want to consider it when we uh, when we want to create a new mechanism uh, that cooperate with us. So. Okay, did Suresh, did you want to say something? Yeah, Suresh Krishna. So like one thing that like I like about this is like uh, one of the things that has changed in the internet is the threat model itself, right? So if you start from 3552, we always assume the communication channel might be compromised, but the endpoints are usually not, right? And, and I think the IAB has started some kind of work on this uh, thing to actually redefine this. So I think it's, it's like a timely thing. Like, you know, we don't know how that's going to go, like the, how the IAB threat model update is going to go. But I think it's in the same kind of category. So I think I'm supportive of the work personally. So I think it's good. Thank you. The Jabber Danny Meyer says this might be useful if ganged with an NTP server. Again? Can you? So tied together with an NTP. It might be useful if tied together with an NTP server. Danny says. It might be useful. Oh. Yeah. It, it, it might. I'm not sure I understand this comment. I'm just relaying the exact words. <laughs> Uh, Maybe Danny can explain a little more. Uh, yeah, he, he hasn't typed any more in here, and he's not. Ah, in okay. Here, so, so what I can say is that uh, in order to to make it more deployable, um, we try to to come up with a mechanism that uh, relates to the client and uh, maybe modified it uh, for uh, um, will really tiny uh, modifications. Um, of course, we can maybe benefit from using or modify the NTP servers, but then I think that the deployable will be much harder. So we are looking at it. it this is one of our, of our uh, further research topics, actually. So, OK. Any other questions? Uh, so I think we will take the, the dis adoption discussion to the mailing list. So okay. thank you. Thank you. Uh, one other thing I wanted to note, if the, those of you haven't looked at the uh, ANRP uh, schedule, uh, uh, the, not the, the uh, IRTF open meeting tomorrow uh, is featuring, uh, as it does every time, one or two of the ANRP prize winners. And um, Netta is one of the prize winners, and she is presenting uh, this work there tomorrow. So it'd be interesting to see what the what the broader community thinks and um, So congratulations to you and I imagine several of us will show up to hear you <laughs> But I, I am interested in seeing how it's received by the broader um, IETF community as well. So um, Okay, the um, So at this point uh, We've covered all of the documents that were updated. Um, I think we have a number of calls for adoption that we need to do. We have some that we haven't done yet for existing documents. Um, and we also have um, uh, a document we need to send out. Uh, I believe it's ready for working group last call. I'm not sure. It's the uh, Ref ID document. The last time we talked, we said we needed to pull the leap smear stuff out. That's been done. Uh, and I was looking at it again, and I believe it's probably at this point ready to go, and we just um, haven't done that. Um, I don't know, Harlan, if you had any planned updates to that or if we were ready to send that for working group last call. Uh, should be ready to go. Okay, uh, great. Um, and then I know that we have some extension field drafts that we didn't send out for adoption. As I said, we're clearing our plate of a bunch of existing documents and we'll get to work on the additional documents. Um, at this point, uh, we have reached the end of our agenda. If Does anybody have any other business? Oh, uh, so Suresh, can you hold up the blue sheet? Uh, is there, has everybody in the room signed the blue sheet? Okay, so we can pass that around again so folks can sign it. Uh, and 
I think that brings us to the end. We, we've sort of wrapped up a bunch of, at the process of wrapping up a bunch of work that's been on the table for a long time, which is kind of a good feeling once we get it actually wrapped up. And uh, so, any other questions? Well, oh, wait. Um, I Maybe I missed it, but uh, uh, did you mention data minimization draft? What's the status for that? I don't think there was any. Oh, yeah, that's on my list. I skipped right over it. Um, so the, we believe the status um, of the data minimization draft is that um, it was, uh, it's gone through working group last call, um, and we were waiting on one set of comments. We haven't received those comments, and so I believe at this point, um, I, we need to do a quick review of the mailing list ourselves just for our own sanity, but I believe it's ready to go to the IESG. Um, so, I, I mean, was that the... Yes, the that was I mean, as I recall, the, the, the current draft represents everything. Um, so this is... So I, I'm guessing, Harlan, that you can't... You, you don't have audio, right? That's why you're... Okay. So in the... In the uh, Oh, he is. Oh, okay, excellent. Go ahead, Harlan. Uh, I don't believe I've received any responses to the objections I've brought forward on the data minimization draft. So this, um, I'm going to speak for Anshul real briefly. This is where we might, this is why I said we need to review the, the mailing list, because I thought that we were at the stage where we were waiting on information from you, Harlan. Um, so I, I, I did not understand. I did not know that. So if I, if you are waiting on information for me, I'll have to go figure out what it might be and then take care of it. Right. So, so maybe the the thing to do is to have a small conversation with um, uh, the data minimization authors and you and maybe the chairs and figure out what piece we're missing. Uh, but when uh, Dieter and I were talking earlier today, we thought that it was something we were waiting from you for. So I mean, I don't have any new information. The objections I've raised, I've done before and I don't know what new information you could want about them, but okay. He says he's not the band, so I think we're gonna to have to take this offline, Harlan, because there there appears okay. to be confusion between at least the chairs, so <laughs> So, uh, so we'll set up a side conversation with um, with the parties involved here. But our understanding was it's been through working group last call, and and the the uh, objection that we had uh, we had one objection on the table. So that's that's the answer to your original question, Anshal, which is what's the status of that draft? Um, so. Um, all right, so way forward is the last thing I did recall that I, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, we do seem to make uh, a little bit better progress when we do virtual interims. So we will be planning some virtual, you know, one, maybe two virtual interims between now and um, the Singapore meeting. Um, and we may try and plan some sort of a virtual uh, interop testing event for NTS, if that makes sense as well. Um, any other comments, questions, comments? Excellent. Thank you very much. And I give you some extra time back in your day. got to be one of the quietest rooms I've ever seen. <laughs> you guys clearly did not do your afternoon coffee break. <laughs> Thank you.